happening online last we couldn't see and I noticed the glare was really bad in the recording. So I'm moving it and trying this. All right, so let's start with prayer. And then we can do our blessing for learning Hebrew. All right, so, so thank you, God, for this day. Um, I pray that Elizabeth and the students would come back to, safely, that they have enjoyed their day. And I thank you for this chance to be together. We always know everything happens for a reason. And uh, we're just grateful for this time to learn some Hebrew and learn a little bit about the days we're counting and the upcoming feast and just to spend some time together. I thank you for these children and their lives. I pray that you'll open their hearts to these times that we have uh, free to worship and assemble and, and learn about you. And I pray that these little seeds of knowledge and spirit would be deeply implanted in them. And I ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. If you want to take out the bracha for learning Hebrew, that I know I'm, I'm looking for the one right now for you, hon. Bracha for learning Hebrew. Blessed is the one who has taught my hand to scribe the letters. And in Hebrew, Baruch, Hamila Med, Et Yadi, Lesaper, Et Haotiot. Amen. Okay, um, so we'll just go straight into the lesson. Just bear with me. There's some reading today. Um, so last week we began to learn about the period of counting between the Feast of Pesach. And if you remember, Pesach is Passover, right? Pesach. Pesach. Pesach, between the period of, <laughs> they have arrived, hello, hi guys, hey, it's a lunch, how are you doing, I'm good, how are you, good, hi, hello, hello, <laughs> hello, hello, good morning, good afternoon, dang it, I get everybody, yeah, the candy's out guys, we kind of already prayed, So I'm just going to start again. Let me just start over. Barely just started. So last week, we began to learn about the period of counting between the Feast of Pesach and Shavuot, this period called Sefirat HaOmer, or counting the Omer, helps us to prepare ourselves during the journey from newly redeemed freedom into a relationship with God. This relationship is made official through the event that took place at Mount Sinai when God gifted the world his instructions, his Torah, for how a holy nation was to live in him. So just take a seat. Got your lesson and a new handout there. Um, and I just started, so we're just second paragraph down at the Leviticus passage. So I'm reading Leviticus 18, 2 through 5 which says, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. You shall not do what is done in the land of Egypt where you lived, nor are you to do what is done in the land of Canaan where I am bringing you. You shall not walk in their statutes. You are to perform my judgments and keep my statutes. 
to live in, in accord with them. I am the Lord your God. So you shall keep my statutes and my judgments by which a man may live if he does them. I am the Lord. So biblically, we should know. I'm on paragraph three now. One, two, three on the lesson. Biblically, we should know that the number seven is highly significant. There are seven days in a week, seven feasts of the Lord, seven branches on the temple menorah, a highly important rest for the land and freedom from debts in the seventh year known as the Shemitah. And thus seven times seven would be exponentially significant. And this is the same period of time used to track the Yovel or Jubilee years, which would be the 50th year. And the same period of counting we are engaged in now seven weeks, 50 days, which lead to the Feast of Shavuot. In Judaism, there's a biblically-based principle known as Shiva, and this is an intense period of seven days in which a person mourns the dead. One, two, three, four paragraphs down is where I am now on page four. So the Hebrew word seven, or Sheva, is also related to the word Shava, Shava which is a very important as it means to swear, as in making an oath. So when you hear in the Bible reading in English, he swore an oath, it's really he sevened an oath. Um, so this is indeed what took place af at Sinai after the seven week period from leaving Egypt. We came to that mountain with God's very presence resting upon it in fire from which he actually spoke from giving us the terms of an eternal promise. He swore to us, he swore to us, and we made a promise in return. The people said at that time, Naase Venishma. We will do and we will hear. And we're gonna learn about that statement more in the future, God willing. So Sheva or seven is the first Hebrew word we're gonna learn today. So let's get our lines ready and you're going to tell me what letter this is shin and then you're going to tell me please the name of this vowel i can give you an extra i just so happen to have it pulled out so if you find it, give me this one back. But if not, file it in your binder, which you hopefully have, or we'll get soon. Back to the three vowels. So which vowel is this? His name only, and then we'll we'll do it. Say goal, say goal. And what sound does he make again? Eh. It's actually eh, like eggs in a little nest. And because his title is Seh Gol, it's easy to remember that he makes the sound Eh. So if we have Shin, which makes what sound by itself? Shh. And we have Eh, what sound will this make here? Sheh. Sheh. Okay. All right, and the next letter we have here, please tell me what his name is. Vet. Say it again for me. Sorry, I'm deaf sometimes. Vet. vet. Good. I got it right there. Vet. And what sound does vet make by itself? Vet. Vuh, right? Oh. It's a vuh. And is, if we had... So this is vet. We have this letter here with the dogesh in the belly of the letter. Now what sound does, does this make? And what letter is it? So um, uh, his name is what? Ev. Right? Say it again. Ev. So, so oh. no, just tell me the name. Uh, no. Nope. That's OK. Keep guessing or just look on the sheet. This is Gamel. They are look-alike letters, so that's not, you're not the first one on the planet to confuse the two. So this would be, good. 
bet, and it makes a b sound. And again, the only thing this dot in the belly of the letter is doing, his name is Dagesh, there's different kinds of Dageshim, and they will do different things to the letter's sounds, but they don't change the meaning of the letter or a word, just the pronunciation. So without the ball in its belly, there's a vacuum, so it's vet. With the ball in the belly, it's vet. That's a little trick to learn that one. All right, so we have vet. And please tell me the name of this vowel. So it, uh, it's... Yes, excellent. Patak. Very good. And what sound does patach make? So remember, the name of the vowel will help us give us a clue as to what sound it makes. So pa ta ah, right? Ah. Okay, so vet with patach would be would make what sound? So good. So let's just do this part for now. Just vet with patak. What would it be? Good. Excellent. And finally, we have this letter, which is what is that one? I know it, but it won't come out. <laughs> good. Ian. Ian. And what sound does Ian make? A. So Ian is actually one of our silent letters, especially if he has no vowel, he'll be silent, okay? So we have Shava. So I'm sorry, Shin, I should have written Vet here and Ian here. So that's how we're going to fill in. And then on your worksheet, in your squares, working from right to left, you want to practice, okay? So you're going to... Make if you want for the children, I will show you right now how to how to write these letters a little bit slower if you want to do it with me. So an easy way would be to kind of make like a U shape. And then if you want to start from the top and just come down like this, that would be a shin. Um and then you could put your dot above this line. And then your little batch of eggs down here for that one. If you want to move on to the next letter, it's kind of like, it reminds me of a hangman if you ever played hangman. So you'd make your kind of your hangman thing. That's what he looks like to me. And then just a line underneath, kind of like a, a, a minus sign. And if you want to try and write ion, you want to start from the top. Um, I would say start heading down and then kind of make just a little line that way. It should be just slightly angled. This one's a lot more angled. Then you come up to the top on the other side and you want to go down, but you don't want to meet right in the in the um, corner there, you want to kind of line it up. It wants to come down right to there. So that's ion. Okay, and if you want to just do it again in your boxes, practice writing. So you're kind of your U shape and come to the middle, join it there. Make your hangman bet. So shin, bet, ion, things like that. Okay, so shiva. Sheva. Sheva is the cardinal number seven, okay? And that's a significant number and ideal and concept in the Bible. Can you think of any other biblical sevens? There's lots of them. Think from Genesis onward. Any sevens you can think of? Any sh Sheva? The seven days of creation. Good. So the seven days of creation. Anything else? Wasn't there some with Passover? Yes, very good. What was it? Uh, the actual, uh, when they, the plagues, the plagues, right? 
that. There's 10 plagues, and they actually lasted almost the course of a year total. Um, but there was a week of something, which is seven days of something we were supposed to do and not do. Do you remember? Oh, unleavened bread. Yeah, so eat matzah at Passover, right? Mm -hmm. At Pesach. Very good. Anything else? There was a lot of, uh, how about, I'll give you a hint, the story of Jacob, Rachel, and Leah. Oh, seven years. Yes. So seven years, and Jacob worked. Joseph, the seven, or his dream, the Good. king's dream. Good, excellent. And seven for Rachel. So Yaakov, Jacob worked for Leah for seven years. And seven more for Rachel, and he actually worked an additional seven to gain his flocks, which would help him kind of start his life with them. And absolutely right. Excellent, excellent. Seven gaunt, that's a cue, gaunt cows were eaten by the seven healthy cows, right, in Pharaoh's dream. And there was seven withered ears of grain that were yeah. devoured by the seven healthy ears. And there was seven years of famine, right? Yeah. Damn it. In your quiz, next part of the quiz, I'm going to have this stuff. So try and remember it. Excellent, excellent work on thinking of those. Um, but try and, you know, recall the ones I'm saying. Seven, seven years of tribulation. That's good, too. There's seven spirits of the Lord also found in Revelation, talks about. Um, there's, yeah, we could look that. Why don't you look that up for an extra credit on... You know, like, look it up, keep it in your notes, but look that one up. Seven Spirits of the Lord uh, that correspond, actually, to the seven branches of the menorah, which correspond to the seven feasts of the Lord. They're all intertwined. So, at any rate, I just wanted to challenge you with that. Shiva, Sheva, seven. Now we're going to look at the Hebrew word Shavua, which means weak. Okay. And that makes sense because a week is seven Sheva days, so Shavua is a week. Sheva, Shavua, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and learn Shavua now. I'm going to use this because I don't have any eraser. I'm going to erase these. Okay, let's go on to the next word, Shavua. Um, this has four letters. Four? Yep. Okay, so we've got four Hebrew letters coming right up. The first one should look very familiar. Okay, so we have, once again, Shin. And we have a new vowel. Tell me his name, please. What is the, the name of this vowel? Kamat. Ka, this, this one is Kamat. Oh, Kamat. And what sound does Kamat make? Uh, oh. Well, try and, re try and remember when you say the name, you'll get the hit. The, the hit. So Kamat. He also says. Uh. uh huh. So there's two A type vowels, Katak and Kamat. So. Shin with kamats would make what sound? Uh, sh, sh. Good. Sh. Okay. Now we have this letter again, which should be very familiar. What is his name? Oh. It's, it's right over there. <laughs> Zed. Zed, thank you. And what sound? He doesn't have a vowel attached to him attached to him just yet, so we have what sound? Shav. Just with a V, right? So so far we've got shav. Okay, here's our letter in a vowel form. What is that? What are we looking at there? So noon. This is noon. Okay. And as a vowel with the dot in its belly, what kind of vav is he? Silent? Nope, vav is never silent. 
So remember the basketball. He's the basketball player. Good. So this is, uh, sorry, Shurukvav. Shurukvav, and he says, ooh. So um, that's what's going to go here. Ooh. Shavu. And so I'm going to put Vav. I'm putting Vav right here. If you'd like, you'd, you could write Shuruk underneath on your paper. Um, and then we have again our which letter? We just looked at him. Good. And because he has a vowel with him, which is which vowel? Right there. Ayan comes with patach, then what sound do we have now? Ah. Good. Shavua. Okay, which means weak. And now we can, I'm gonna with the kiddos, and y'all can join in too, because you should be participating writing on your paper. Okay, again, for shin, you make like a U, and a line that comes down to there. Same thing with our hangman. Shin, vet, the only new letter you have now is vav. And he's got a little line on top and a line down. He is like a tent peg or a hook. He's a fastener. He, his name is vav, can also be a word. He can be and. Okay, and then finally ayin, so your line headed down, a little bit of an angle, and then your line to here, making sure to leave that little space in between. Shin, vet, vav, and ayin for shavua. Are you keeping up, Lira? Okay, good. All right, I still don't know if that's too glary, but I hope not. Okay, all right. So we practice writing. So we have Sheva, we have Shavua, and now we're going to turn the page. So turn to page five, and I'm going to give you a little bit of grammar. So most feminine words in Hebrew end with the letter He or the letter Tav. So masculine words, most masculine words would end with all the other letters other than He or Tav, okay? So, just right off, Shavua, is it feminine or masculine? If we're keeping to that rule. It would be masculine because it does not end with a hey, it does not end with a top. There are a number of irregular words, lots of them, <laughs> that don't fall under this rule. So you have to memorize them. And that'll hopefully not be frustrating as we go along. To make a Hebrew word plural, we're going to add a suffix. What's a suffix, guys? Just so like you have these two types of words, prefixes and suffixes. So let's see if I said I want, uh, if a baby is premature, what does that mean? Pre, like before. Before, okay? So if a prefix would be any number of letters coming before a word, so then that would mean that a suffix would be what? The opposite of that, which which would be what? After. Okay? Like a... So we'll have, we'll have letters coming after, after our Hebrew words to determine Masculine words, you'll have your word, whatever it is, okay, and you will add a, what letter is this? Yeah. This little letter, it's the smallest Hebrew letter, oh. yod. Uh, yod. yod, very good, and then you'd have, you said this next letter, yeah. yes, and it's a final mem, right, because it's going to be at the end of the word, yeah. so. So for a masculine word, you're just going to add yod mem 
um, which is pronounced like im. Okay. For a feminine word, you'll have whatever word you've got, and then you're going to add these two letters. This one, if you remember, he's kind of brothers with this guy. Bob. He's a Bob. He's a certain kind of Bob because of our dot. Yeah. So why don't you tell me what sound he makes and then maybe we can find out, maybe remember the name. So we have Shuruk Bob and we have a, another kind of Bob. So if Shuruk says O, oh, what sound does Shuruk Bob make? Yeah, so actually, you know what? This is O. I'm sorry, O. I gave it away because I'm a little slow. I'm just going to tell you it. Holam Bob says O. Oh. Okay, so we have O oh, and this other letter. Which letter is this here? We haven't seen him. Good. Okay, so that's pronounced O. Oh, Okay, I'm gonna put it like that. Oat. So, for masculine words, it's the yod and final mem. Im. What is otiot? Otiot is letters. So, an oh, oat. Because I remember, I don't know why I did. That's oat excellent. <laughs> so, oat would be one letter. Oti iot, right, is plural letters. And otiot is on your blessing. Um, yeah. Excellent thinking. Your brain is on today. Okay, so, <laughs> so with feminine words, what we would do, we're going to do some practice here, is we'll drop BH. this little chart here and I'm just going to draw it on the board and we're going to fill it in together. So, so you got your chart on your paper. I've given you your Hebrew words. We're going to turn them into plural and write what they mean in English. Okay. So we've got Sheva words which means how many words? Seven. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're going to do three columns. Okay. So our first word consists of the following letters. Tell me the letters first, then we'll do the vowels. Which letter is this? Good. Which letter is this? Good. Okay, and which letter is this? Okay. Good. Um, what I'd like you to do, just because there's space right there, is this feminine or masculine? Based upon the general rule I gave you above. So most feminine words at the top of page five end with hey, or top. So what's that? This is a hey. So that one's feminine. If it ends with hey or tav, it's feminine. Okay, so we'll put a little F in parentheses there. All right. Now we're going to fill in our vowels. We have uh, patak. Don't worry about that dogish. I'm putting it there because it's accurate, but we don't need to worry about it. It's a pronunciation issue which I am still getting better at. So we have patak and we have kamats. So we have, so let's sound out this word together, okay? So mem with patak would make what sound? Ma. Good, ma. And then sari with kamats would make what sound? Good, sa. 
and then we'll go ahead and just add that H. So matza is our word. You may have as well go over here. Matza. You could do S or you can do T. I guess S would be a little more accurate pronunciation wise. Matza is our first word. And matza is what? It's unleavened bread, right? In your third column, you'd write matza. Okay, now let's do our plural form. If we're gonna make matza plural, we're gonna write our mem the same, our tzadi the same, but what are we not gonna write? We're gonna drop our hay and we're gonna add two letters. Which two letters are we going to write? Over here, our kolom vav and our tav. Okay. And it would be then pronounced, let's write it on top. I'm sorry, I probably should have told you that, and that will be good. So when you got these, either, yeah, it's okay for the first one. Sorry about that. If you want to, like, draw a line, that's fine. If you want to do it diagonally, that's fine. I should have thought of that one. Mat. Old is what we have now. Okay? And if you'd like also, I guess I'm kind of springing stuff on you. Singular, S, P, L, plural, to indicate which one is which, if you'd like. Okay, this is just an exercise. Let's do another Hebrew word. We have this letter. Which letter is this? Good guess. Tav has a little toe there. This does not. Wait, don't go ahead. Oh, yeah. Tav has a tapping toe, and it makes a T sound. But this Ket. letter, good. Chet. Chet. Okay, so we have Chet. Um, and we have this letter. So... Oh, that's Gimel. Yes. So we have chet with patak, which would be which sound? With a. Ah. So we have cha and gimel, which makes the G sound. So we have chag. Chag. So let's write it here. Chag. Chag means feast or festival. Chag hamatzot. Hag Hashavuot, Hag Pesach, Feast of whatever it may be. Now we're going to make Hag plural. Do we know if it's feminine or masculine? Let's make it plural. We'll put our Chet again. We'll put our gimel again, but we're going to add two more letters. And since it's masculine, they're going to be which two? It's going to just be um, yod and uh, uh, mem. Yep, yod and final mem. Yod and final mem. So if hag was hag alone, hag, and then we have this, what? how would we pronounce that? Hag and im. Hagim. 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 So we'll put hag is S for singular. Hag. Oopsies. Hagim is plural. All right. Okay. All right, Miles, we're on page five. We're filling out this chart. On the third word down, let's write this word we have this letter which is what i heard it can you say it a little louder somebody said it say it loud which letter is this tav and this letter good and this letter good and this letter. Hey. Okay, 
so with our um, vowel points, our Nikudim. Nikudim. Uh, we would have the Tav with whole on Vav. So what sound would that create? Oh. With Tav, though, it would be what? You had your your bob oh. sound good. Okay. To and then our resh with um, kamats would be what? Uh, ah. Yes, but resh first. Resh sound first. Oh, resh. Um. Uh, hang on, let me get the er, ra. Good. So like a an r with ra. an a. Ah, yeah, ra. Torah is this word. Torah. Oh, the Torah. Yes, and. That's um. The, the law. Yes, right? yes. It means teaching. It means instruction. It means to hit the mark. Okay. Torah. So we'll put that here. Torah is singular. Um, and now we're going to make Torah plural. Is it feminine or is it masculine? Good. Torah is feminine because of that hey. So if we're going to pluralize Torah, we're going to drop our hey and we're going to add which two letters? O -T or o Good. O -T Excellent. So we've got Tav, Holam Vav, Rish, dropping the hey and adding another Holam Vav and, and Tav. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add those because that'll help us pronounce it and write it here in the plural. So if we had Torah, but we dropped the hey, let's try and sound it out. So we have, let's just do the Tav sound with Hol and Vav. What would that make? Torah. Oat, right? Yeah, Torot. Torot. Okay, Torot. Laws, Torahs. This is plural. Torot. Okay, next word down. Let's do this one. Which letter is this? And since it has, I'm sorry, it has the dagesh in the belly. Which one is this? Oh, bet. Bet is like this. It's a hangman with a dargish. Oh. So he's a look-alike with that one, but which one is that one? Here, let me get... You don't have your papers, buddy? Let me get you at least the Hebrew letters so you can try and... Then you have them here. Yes. What's that? Uh, no, it isn't. Uh, so Resh is like this. It does start the same. That's Resh. This is a different. Um, it can look like this. It can look just straight like that. It can look a lot boxier. Yes. So this is. I was like, none of these are curved. I don't know which one it is. Yes. Sorry, I uh, realized as we were talking, I might it might be a little boxier in block print. So this is cuff because that dogesh is sticking in its throat, just keeping it a hard K sound. When it does not have that, it's ha because the phlegm is free to fly from its mouth. Okay, so we have cuff. We have cuff. And we have this letter. Which letter is this? Good. And we have this letter, a little bit tricky. That one? Which is that one? 
It's not buff because it's going lower than the rest of them, so we should know something about it. It's a final letter, but which one? Noon. Yes, good. So final noon. Let me add the vowels. Okay, first of all, when a letter has any letter has this dot above, what vowel is that? What is his name and what sound does he make? So like the holum vav who has the dot over, this is just straight holum, holum, and he says o, o, holum, o. So we have kaf with holum, so what sound do we have? O. Um, kaf makes what sound? Ko. Good. Ko. And we have hey with another vowel, which we haven't put up on the board yet. Which vowel is this, and what sound does it make? Okay, good. This is se re, se re, e re, se re, e, like in eggs again, but this time there's only two. E with se re would be what sound? Good, I heard it. He. And then noon, what sound does noon make? Noon. Good. So we have this word kol hen. Kol hen. Does anybody know what kol hen means? Kol hen is priest. Okay, I'm going to put these off to the side. I should have. Kol hen is priest. Torah is teaching. Instruction. Hag was feast. Matzah is unleavened bread. Okay, so we have Kohen. Now, is this masculine or feminine? Feminine. Does it have a hey or a tab at the end? Oh, wait, no. Masculine. Okay. And so we'll go ahead and start writing Kohen over here. We have Ka, we have He, we have Noon. I'm, he's now inside a word because we're going to add two more letters. So he changes back to, instead of his final form, he's now back to usual, regular Noon. Kohen. And what two letters are we going to add as a suffix to change it to plural? We want more than one priest here. Which, which two letters are we going to add? Im, which consists of which two? Say them in Hebrew. Yod and Mem. Yod and Mem. Okay. Um, so... Actually, ha, kohanim. Okay, Okay, this is the vowels for this word, kohanim. I just gave it to you, kohanim. <laughs> we were gonna sound it out together. Kohani, kirik yod, nim. Okay, so we'll go ahead and kohanim is how that one is. Kohan is singular. Kohanim is plural. All right, I gave that one away a little bit. That's all right, because we are going to need to speed it up a little bit here. Why don't, for homework, you do the next two on your own, okay? So try and remember how I added things here. You want to write, is it masculine or feminine in parentheses beside it? You're going to write it out as best you can with the plural Hebrew suffix added, but in this last box, draw a line Write your singular form, write your plural form. And I will check it next week. That's the first thing I'll do. So do those next two lines. And then... So far we learned Shiva is seven. Um, 
Shavua is weeks or week. Shavuot is weeks. And that's the name of the feast that we were learning about. So we had Sheva, seven, right? Shavua. Was it hey or iron? I'm um, iron. Hey, iron. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Hope you weren't copying that down. Shavua was weak. Shavuot is on here. You can see that it's Shavua with oat. that I'm going to look basically next time at this section in particular first when we come to class. We have, I'm going to go 10 minutes longer. I don't think there's enough time to finish. We'll probably just do page six and do our blessing. Mm -hmm. Not today. Not today. We could do that next week. Okay? Yeah, because I didn't bring my speaker or any of that. All right, page six. So what is Shavuot? Shavuot is known by several names. The Feast of Weeks, because we count seven weeks from Passover to this special date. The Feast of the First Fruits, or Hag Habikurim, because this time, at this time, the people would come and bring their first fruits of their harvest in an elaborate celebratory, celebratory, celebratory parade. It would be like a whole big old deal up to Jerusalem uh, and the Holy Temple. It's also known as the Feast of Harvest. And in Greek, it's known as Pentecost. Uh, it's coming from the Greek root pente, which means five, referring to that, I was telling you about seven times 749 up to 50, the 50th day is Shavuot. So Pentecost, 50th, referring to this festival that we're talking about, celebrated at the end of the barley harvest, which is a very joyous time of giving great thanks to God. And that is found in Acts 2. I'm going to read 1 through 6. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind. Does any of this remind you of Sinai and the giving of the Torah? The storm and the fire and all of that, they're the same parallel event, but just different manifestations. That too, hey, that's, that's good connection. You're really on today. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing themselves as they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. But that word is glosa, it means languages. As the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the crowd came together and they were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in their own native tongue or language. So one thing to establish before moving on, and I'm thinking we'll, we'll stop here, is that there are three specific feasts of the Lord which are called the pilgrimage feasts. And at those three times of the year, all the males of the children of Israel, God's people were to, quote, appear before the Lord, that is, to come to the holy temple in Jerusalem and bring the appointed offerings. Note, women and families certainly could and did accompany the men, but the man would be like the representative of the family. So let's read, actually I'll read this, I'll keep go a couple, couple more minutes. Okay, Exodus 23, 14 through 19. Three times a year you shall celebrate a feast to me. You shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For seven days you are to eat unleavened bread as I commanded you at the appointed time in the month of Aviv. For in it you came out of Egypt, and none of you shall appear before me empty-handed. Also, you shall observe the feast of harvest of the first fruits of your labors. From what you sow in the field, also the feast of the ingathering at the end of the year when you gather in the fruits of your labors. Three times a year all your males shall appear before the Lord God. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread. 
nor is the fat of my feast to remain overnight until morning. You shall bring the choice first fruits of your soil into the house of the Lord your God. And so I have this little chart just so you can discern. the scripture so passover or pesach is hag hamatzot the feast of unleavened bread feast of weeks or shavuot is known as hag ha katsir bikurim the feast of the first fruits of the harvest feast of tabernacles or sukkot hag ha asif or the feast of ingathering the hebrew word used to denote these pilgrimage feasts is regel and we will soon see the cool significance of the shoresh or the root of that word and we'll go ahead and stop there but we'll do shema before we leave okay cut it a little short today just because it was a little bit different of a kind of a day today so thank you guys super much don't forget to do the homework we'll do shema before you leave so pick out shema if you've got it otherwise maybe maybe you can remember it so we could say it in english first leor i need your participation on this one Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, and Shema, Yisrael, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Echad. So we can sing it. Shema, Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Thank you guys. Do your homework. <laughs>